Hello. You are actually a camera, just like that. See? You are a Nikon 1J2. And conveniently, right over top of your face, one of these pieces of PVC pipe fits. And snaps on to your attractive machined aluminum ring very nicely. So I've been experimenting with making a macro lens. The term always confused me because really it's more like a micro lens, isn't it? Because macro usually means big, large, wide scale, whereas micro means tiny, small. I have no idea the origin of the term, and it is misleading. Nevertheless, that's what I'm doing today. Most of these lenses are inexpensive. This is a rather nice one. You probably have seen it before. I use it in videos quite frequently. The other ones, uh, I think these are binoculars. I can't remember where these came from, but they're medium grade. That one's pretty cheap. This is a nice one. This is fairly reasonably high quality. And this is the one, after a couple tests, that I decided that I would use for my macro lens. And it will be something like this. I'll show you the test that I did, and I will show you some footage with the different lenses. And hopefully you'll find some of it pretty neat. My glue gun isn't quite heated up yet because it will start to drip when it's ready. Yes, I'm just using a glue gun. I'm still in the prototyping stage. But in the meantime, I will show you what this camera can do. This is the maximum natural zoom that this camera is capable of. And that is as much as I can give you and still be in focus somewhat. So next, we will try it by adding this cheap lens and I'll show you what we can get. Not bad, right? I'm just holding the lens in place. Now I'll try this slightly better lens. Now I will happily admit to you that I have no formal training in optics whatsoever. As a matter of fact, I find it incredibly confusing. The physics has always boggled my mind. Not that anybody out there really understands the nature of electromagnetic radiation anyways, but I really don't know much about this area of investigation. So please understand that I'm a lay person. But what I can tell you is that this is a convex lens. See how it bubbles out a little bit? A mnemonic device so that you can remember it is that a concave lens bows in like a cave entrance. Now excuse the shakiness, but even the smallest bump is going to look like a huge earthquake here on camera now. But look at that. That is quite an improvement. And I'm just looking at the image through the camera, but I could imagine that when I see it, it's going to be in pretty high quality. Now we're dripping, so let's build the good one. Don't worry, the hot glue won't ruin the lens. It wasn't that expensive anyways. I bought a bunch of them in bulk online. I gave a bunch of them away, which I kind of regret, so I think I'm going to order some more. It's a very convenient lens size for all sorts of experiments. If my face shows up in one of these weird reflections, just don't pay attention to it. You're not supposed to know what I look like, you know. I'm not embarrassed by, by the... I'm not embarrassed by the possibility, but it probably will ruin it for you. You'll never be able to unsee Another benefit to this, well, lens cover design 
is that it will protect the primary lens when I'm filming things like grinding and such. There are a lot of things that I do that really risk the camera lens. Some of these shots have the camera way too close to spinning things and ejecting particles and fire and everything else. There have been a couple times where I was uh, pretty nervous. I've always been interested in trying this ever since a long time ago. I took a biology class and we found a ladybug and we put it on one of the stereo microscopes and oh my goodness was it bizarre looking. I've always wanted a stereo microscope and a nice concession is to be able to make very very close up images and it will scratch that itch but just like so many things in life it just gets pushed back and pushed back and hey, best laid plans of mice and men right what is the nature of this strange alien landscape it's definitely organic in nature Well, its nature is to be my lunch, after which we'll go up to the greenhouse and look for things to photograph. By the way, this is called a trefoil cookie. Where have we heard that word before? And I think that I have the focus correct there. Now remember, you're watching live action video. This is not a voiceover. See? I think we can get a little bit closer. That's about as tight as I can get it. But these little purple flowers are about one quarter of an inch and it's in their longest direction. It's from top to bottom, from the stem to that end of that bell, it is about a quarter of an inch at the most. So that's a pretty close up shot. Now I'm going to zoom out in order to best give you a sense of scale because it's kind of hard to explain what you're looking at. Well, this would certainly take some more practice, but without a doubt it's interesting. There's some potential here. It's very difficult to do it in the sun. The focus is pretty unforgiving, but I'm anxious to see the footage, so thank you for watching, and I'm going to go check this out now.